guys so since in my last vlog I kind of revealed my geeky little crocheting hobby that I do I learned when I was really young and I still very very simple I'm talking like the most basic crochet stitches ever but I still do it sometimes I thought I would show you guys this nifty little device this is called a wool winder and my sister and brother-in-law got it for me for Christmas and basically what it does is it takes the ball of yarn that you buy at the store and it unwinds it into just like this super easy to use neat little ball so you can just pull and it'll just come straight across ooh, or right off the table and this little bowl this teak wood bowl um, my sister and brother-in-law got for me as well to go with the wool winder but basically it seems like something that'd be like a huge waste of time I always thought that unwinding your skein would be a huge waste of time but actually it makes the project go so much faster because you're not constantly yanking on the yarn or anything like that it just is like super smooth super easy never gets into knots and um, unwinding it goes super, super fast. You can get um, your skein of yarn into this nice, neat little ball in just like under a minute. It's fantastic. So after last Sunday's vlog, my intention was to shoot the wear test for the Dior, the Dior Skin Forever Undercover Foundation that I've been so excited about. And I shot the footage and I just was really not happy with it because the cold sore still hadn't fully healed. And I feel like I'm finally starting to sound normal again. I didn't realize how badly congested I was, but um, yesterday, which was Sunday, I ended up just going to a minute clinic at a CVS and told them how long I'd been sick off and on, and they ended up just prescribing me some antibiotics and a prescription cough syrup. Um, so I've just been on the antibiotics now for about 24 hours, and already I can feel things being relieved. So I just, like I said, I don't think I was aware of how congested I was. But I feel like my voice is finally starting to come back to normal. Anyway, the wear test that I shot, I just did not feel very happy with the footage and the way that that came out. And I'm also thinking of maybe mixing up how I do wear tests or product reviews anyway. Um, if you want a full wear test of the Dior Foundation, comment, and comment down below. Let me know and I'm more than happy to do it in the traditional way that I had been doing it over the course of the past year. Um, but I thought I might mix it up and kind of just find a new way to talk about it and present the information that might be a little bit more interesting. So stay tuned for that or, you know, if I get enough feedback that you just want your traditional wear test on it, more than happy to go ahead and do that as well. But if I do that, it'll be in a few more days, maybe another week because I really want my voice to be back to normal. I really want my cold sore to be completely gone. This is the skin blurring camera, so maybe you can't really see it as much, but um, I'm really trying to get rid of it slowly so it won't scar, won't leave a scar, and that is that. So I am just jumping into another vlog with some interesting, more personal type things because that's what I feel like filming this year. I think it's time to just start shooting some videos that I find entertaining and that I would want to see. So that is the goal for 2018, or at least part of the goal, that's what we're doing. So I'm going to go and um, make some dinner. And that is going to be Monday night. I think I'm going to keep working on the project as the project kind of um, develops into something a little more solid. I'll show it to you guys so you can see. And then, of course, once I start my nephew's blanket, I'll show you that one as well. But I think this one's going to be just so pretty. I love purple. Hi, everyone. It's Tuesday morning, uh, January 23rd, and I've got on um, the Dior the Dior Skin Forever Undercover Foundation. This is my other camera. This is not the one with the skin blurring effect, so you are getting full high def view of what this foundation looks like and I'm going to talk to you guys about it a little bit more later. I am running late for work but I did want to pop on and just do a little sort of outfit of the day post. So today I just threw on a really chunky knit black cardigan that has this sort of like puffed out ruched shoulder which gives it a lot more shape up at the top. Um, that's just over top of a basic white long sleeve tee from H&M and a black cami. Um, light denim from Buckle and I went with just Ugg boots today because I was way colder than I thought it would be yesterday. And to tie, and to tie the Ugg boots into the look, I'm just throwing this um, blanket scarf from H&M over top of everything. I'll show you over here in this other light, in the ring light here. I stepped away because you couldn't really see the shoulder of the cardigan in this light before, but just so you can see sort of the color pattern of the scarf. 
and tying it with the boots and it should be nice and cozy for my work day. So it's quite a bit later and I'm home from work at the end of the day now and I still have some natural light out here so I just thought I would give you guys a good look at how the foundation is looking probably 10 or 11 hours since I applied it now. It's almost 5 o'clock here I think, 4.30 or so and I put it on at about 5.30 in the morning so about 11 hours. I touch up throughout the day a little bit on my nose, cheeks, and chin with um, my Maybelline Fit Me Pressed Powder, but other than that, no oil blotting, no nothing, and again, this is the good camera, not the one that has the facial blurring feature, so this is how that foundation has held up, and now what I think I'll do is just sort of sit down and talk to you guys about it in comparison to some of the other Dior foundations and what I like about this one so much. So for those of you who have been just as excited about this launch as I have, I wanted to take a minute and review a little bit. So the Dior foundation that I have been a fan of for years is the Dior Skin Forever Perfect Makeup. And they redid this formula maybe a year or two ago, two years ago I think now. And I did a wear test on that at the time versus the original formula. And really the only difference was that this one had higher SPF content but the formulation was still amazing, the color was still accurate. Um, I'll link that video down below if you are interested. But this is the foundation that has remained a holy grail in my top five foundations ever since. So I was super excited to try this new one, the Dior Skin Forever Undercover Foundation. So what is the difference? The older foundation, the Dior Skin Forever Perfect Makeup, it's more of a medium coverage, which you can build to a full coverage, and the finish on it is a more luminous, velvety finish. Whereas the Dior Skin Forever Undercover Foundation is a full finish with more of a, I'm sorry, a full coverage with more of a matte finish. So this one's more matte, this one's more luminous, you're going to get a little bit more coverage with this one. Also this one purports to be 24 hour wear, this one purports to be 16. Um, I never found this to be a 16 hour wear foundation with my oily skin. I would say that the best I ever got out of this was probably 10 to 12, which is still amazing. And I have never tried to keep foundation on my face for 24 hours at a time, so I can't speak to that. But I will say that this puppy has gotten me, obviously, 11 hours with nothing but powder touch-ups. And I could probably wear this face for another 5 hours. So you're talking like 17 hours on a foundation at that point, and that is amazing. That's the best I've ever seen. The other thing that I really like about the new one is we have moved away from the classic pump bottle to these, the sort of precision applicator. And the reason I like the precision applicator is you can kind of just squeeze it out into droplets on your face in small amounts wherever you would like. It's kind of difficult I find to do a half pump on the pump bottle so I would end up just doing one big pump in three places on my face and that always worked fine, it's not a big deal, but being able to sort of put smaller amounts all over my face I feel makes it go on a little bit more easily, a little bit more evenly as well. So very impressed by that. Also, interestingly enough, the original foundation is a $52 bottle of foundation and this one is $48 and yet this one is only one fluid ounce and in this one you get a little bit more. It's 1.3 fluid ounces. I don't know if some of that might come down to the packaging because another change, um, Dior has the traditional frosted glass bottle and this is a plastic bottle so maybe saving a little bit of money there, I'm not really sure. The pigment concentration in the forever the Forever Skin Undercover, oh my god! Another thing is that the pigment concentration in the Forever Undercover line is touted to be really impressive. Um, I mentioned that when I reviewed the Forever Undercover Concealer that came out a few months back, which I actually used with this today. And that one, I kind of didn't really notice a massive pigment change as far as concealers go. I feel like concealers are going to be a more concentrated pigmentation anyway because you're targeting dark circles and red spots and, red spots and blemishes and so you wanted to have more coverage anyway. But I will say, um, as far as like, the full coverage and the pigmentation of this foundation goes, it definitely layers up and covers more smoothly and quickly than their old one. And like I said, this one has been like in my holy grail pile for ages, so to say that something has knocked that out is really, really impressive. So that is just kind of my overall review of the new Dior foundation. I said that one thing I was gonna start doing for you guys was doing like a, I like this better than, but not as much as. Um, so I will say I like this better than the Givenchy Matissimi Velvet Foundation that I reviewed for you guys last summer. I was so, so excited about that foundation. I raved about it. I still love it, um, but it, in my heart I'm always going to be more of a full coverage girl. And that foundation, very much like this one, is more of a medium coverage sort of velvety luminous finish. 
and right now, especially just being in the winter months, I'm really digging the full coverage, so I like it better than that one. There isn't really one in my collection right now that I can say I don't like it as much as. This has kind of knocked itself into my number one spot. Um, I will say I like it as much as, if not more than, the YSL All Hours Foundation that I also reviewed for you guys last fall. That is another amazing full coverage foundation that I was really impressed with. For those who are curious, I am in shade 10 in this foundation. That is the lightest one in my old one. I actually have it in a 20 for when I sunless tan because the last time I bought a bottle I was sunless tanning really regularly and I kind of fall off the wagon with that in the winter months, but um, that is the shade that I have in this one. And I'm just going to drop off my review there. Like I said last night, if anybody really wants me to do the full throughout the day wear test, just let me know in the comments below and I'm happy to do it. But I've given this one a try for a couple weeks and I'm just very, very impressed with it. So I feel like that was all I really needed to say. So I have a pre-workout that I need to drink and motivate myself to get moving a little bit. Yesterday was the first day that I felt up to exercising at all after being sick for so long. The antibiotics were kind of kicking in, so I got a gentle workout in and I kind of want to keep the ball rolling with that. So I'm going to go do that and then get back to the rest of the vlog. It is Wednesday night and I just did the first strength workout, like weights instead of cardio and plyometrics that I've done and I honestly can't remember how long and especially with being sick, I this is the first week I'm kind of like getting back in the swing of things with working out so that was really intense, just shared that with you guys. Um, now I have on this little guy, I'm actually trying to work through some of the 8,000 samples that I have. This is a sample from Pharmacy, spelled with an F. This is their Honey Potion Renewing Antioxidant Hydration Mask. And I've used it once before, but it's been a while. And it actually feels really cool. So it's actually like this thick yellow substance. Let me open it. So there, if you can see, it's actually like this really thick yellow substance. But when you put it on... You massage it for like a minute or two and then it turns into this like thick white cream and then you leave that sit on your face for like 10 to 15 minutes. So it's a little bit tingly on my skin, but um, products that I've used that have like any sort of honey or my phone is ringing. Anyway, any, any products that I've used in the past that have any sort of like honey or anything like that tend to give my skin that tingly feeling. I think that's supposed to be like the rejuvenating effect that it's supposed to have on skin. I'm not really sure, but um, so yeah, trying that out. And it's actually a really expensive mask. I looked at the full size product at Sephora's website and it's like $56 or $58, which I know I buy foundations that are that much all the time, but I digress. So it's gonna be a night in. I've got my uh, crochet here ready to go that I unwound yesterday. So probably gonna do some Netflix and that and ruin my workout with some pizza that I smell that Ricky is making. Um, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off the vlog here. So if you're new, thank you so much for watching and tuning in. Click subscribe, I would love to have you guys back. Um, as always, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you spending it with me on my videos and I will see you guys in my next one. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful that is.